Hello everyone, it's Thursday night, so it's time for our quick vart on the Parsha. This week's quick vart is being given Le'ili Nishmas, Miriam Liba, Bas Rebbe Aaron, the Neshama should have an Aliyah. So, Parsha's Mishpatim. There's the very first Rashi, not the first Rashi, actually the second Rashi, Parsha's Mishpatim. I think everybody's familiar with the Rashi, but I want to take a little bit of a closer look at it and see what lesson we could learn for ourselves from this Rashi. The Pasuk says, and these are the dinim asher tosim lifnehem, that you should place before them. And Rashi notes that this is very interesting phraseology, asher tosim lifnehem. The Rabbani Shalom tells Moshe Rabbeinu he should lay out the dinim in front of Klal Yisrael. He doesn't say that he should teach them the dinim. He should say, ve'elah mishpatim, asher talamdim. These are the laws that you should teach them. It's not what it says. It says Asher Tassim Lufnehem that he should lay them out in front of Klai Yisrael. So Rashi says Asher Tassim Lufnehem, Amar Lo Hakadosh Baruch Hu LaMoshe. Hakadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, Lo Yisaila Al Dait Cholaymar. You should not think to say, Eshna Lohem HaPerek VaHaHalacha. I'll teach them the Perek. I'll teach them the Halachas. Beis or Gimel Pa'amim two or three times. Until it's organized in their mouths. Until they have it. They know what it says. They know Vashtate. And they kind of by rote. They memorized it. They know it. Kimishnasa, the way it's taught. Pshutai Kimashmai. If the Rabbi Shalom gives me a Tayrak Daisha and it says, Arba Aves Tazik and Ashar Vabar Vahamava Vahaheva, so I'll teach Kla Israel, you should know. To our four of us, the Zikin, and these the Halachas. The Ashar, there's a Mazak of Karen. Karen, there's a Shar Tam, there's a Shar Muid. You should know there's Regal and Shane. Uh, Regal and Shane are Chayiv and Rishos Anizik, the Potter and Rishos Arabim. These are the rules, these are the laws. Now you know them. I taught them to you the way they were given over to me. The Eni Matriachats me, and I will not bother myself. Lahavinam tame hadavar to have them understand the reasonings, the tame hadavar vos licked what's behind all the halachas upirushay and their explanations. I'll give them exactly what the rabbi Shem gave me. The rabbi Shem gave me tayag mitzvahs. The rabbi Shem gave me rules and regulations. I'll give over to Klai Yisrael the rules and regs the way it was given over to me. But I don't have to give them anything deeper than that. I don't have to give them a deeper understanding. I don't have to give them the Tame Hadavar in order so that Moshe Rabbeinu should not think this way. The Rabbeinu Shalalim said, Asher Tosim Lufnehem. Lakach Nema. This is why the Pasik says, Asher Tosim Lufnehem, that you should lay it out in front of them. Kishulchan Ha'oruch, like a set table. Umuchan Le'echel where everything is prepared to eat, lifnei ha'adam, before the person. So says Rashi. So I'm looking at this Rashi, and I'm, I'm seeing, and I'm not saying any grosse chidushim over here, but I think that there's a couple of very deep lessons in this Rashi that we really have to take to heart. One of them is in the context of chinuch, and the other one is in the context of us ourselves. When it comes to Chinuch, and again, I'm going to use Baba Kama as an example. We take a child, we take a young yeshiva bacher, we send him off to yeshiva. And what do we tell him? Oh, we tell him the Torah, it's mamish, misukim itvash. It's sweet like honey, ah, mamish, the Torah, it's so delicious, it's so wonderful. And you're going to see, you're going to go to yeshiva, send him off to yeshiva. Bacher sits down in yeshiva. He starts learning Arba of his tzikin, Hashar v'abar v'hamav v'hahever. And he starts learning about cows and cows that go and gore other animals or they eat uh, other people's food and they're chayiv in 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 rishos anizik. They're potter in rishos arabim. And Aish is is potter on tamun if something was hidden and it got burnt. And all of these details, sometimes the Bacher is sitting and he's waiting. Where is the Besuka Midvash? If you have an appreciation for puzzles, if you have an appreciation for logic, 
if you have an appreciation for mental gymnastics. So yeah, definitely there are always going to be Bacharim that they manage to get caught up in the lumdus and they love every minute of it. And yes, it's also true that the Torah does appeal naturally to our neshamas, and therefore once we get involved in Torah, there's a natural enjoyment that ultimately, hopefully, will come, but that also depends. Are you learning Torah Lishma? Are you not learning Torah Lishma? But sometimes the subject matter and and the ins and outs and the cheshbonus of the Gemara, sometimes it doesn't necessarily appeal to a child. The Rabbi Nisham tells Moshe Rabbeinu, that's not the game plan. The game plan isn't give it over to them, Kimish Nasa. Just here are the books, here are the rules and regs, go ahead, learn it. Today we're learning Baba Kama, tomorrow we're learning Baba another year we're going to learn the Dorim, and we're going to learn all about Hare Ze Kikainim. This is going to Kainim Alai Ze, and the details and the intricacies of what words he used, and if it's a, a nether, or it's a Shvua, or it's a this or a that. What we have to give over is the Tame Hadavar and the Pirushai. And it has to be a Shulchan Aruch Umuchan Lechay Lifnei Ha'adam. You know what that means? Imagine you're inviting over to your house a whole parcel of guests. So you spend a week and you prepare. And you make smoked brisket and you make roasted lamb and you make all sorts of delicious delicacies and you go out and you buy Cabernet Sauvignon for the people who like dry wine and you get Asti Spamanti for the people who like sweet wine and you make chocolate mousse for the people who like chocolate for dessert and you make strawberry shortcake for the anti-chocolate people and Mamish, you go ahead and you spend time preparing, preparing, preparing and you're telling everybody, wait, you got to see what we're going to have. It's going to be unbelievable. You invite everybody over to your house. They walk in. There's nothing to eat. There isn't a, a morsel of food anywhere. They come in. Fine. You know, if they find something to drink, this everybody's walking around. But people are grouchy. And you, you, you come in, you say, I don't understand. Why, why isn't everybody happy? Somebody comes, well, where's the food? Well, what do you mean? The brisket's in the oven. The lamb is in the other oven. The cake, I have cake. It's in the refrigerator. And the, the drinks, the downstairs, in the big refrigerator downstairs. And the ice cream is in the freezer outside. Nobody even knows it's there. And and now that they find out it's there, so they take a 9 by 13 out of the oven and, and now find Kalim and go and serve it out. That's not what you do. What do you do? You put out a beautiful spread. You make a presentation. You put it out of beautiful platters. People come in. And mifreitzach, they see the, they see everything laid out in front of them, and it's beautiful, and it smells delicious, and they don't know where to turn first, and they taste some of this, and wow, it's delicious, and they taste some of that. Shulchan aruch umuchan umucha lecha lefnei ha'adam. That's the way you go and you serve out delicacies to people. When we serve out the Torah hakdosha to our children. You can't just send them off to yeshiva and expect them to just run off to yeshiva and learn Baba Kama, learn Gittin, learn the Darim, learn Mishnayis Kachim, uh, and have a Halacha Seder, and have this and have that, and be automatically pumped and overjoyed, and they can't get enough of it, and they when they run home, they can't wait to get back to the Mishmegish. You have to give them, first of all, Tame Adovar. It's a beautiful word that they say on Pesach. You know, that's one of the, just about, I think, the only mitzvah or the concept of a mitzvah that we have that has to do with taste. You don't need anything after the afikayim. Why? Because we want the taste of the matzah to remain in our mouths. We want the tam of the mitzvah to stay in our mouths. And that's the halacha that you tell the chacham. When the Chacham comes and the Chacham says, Ma, Ido is Fakukiv Amishpatam Ayla, what do you tell him? Ain Maftir and Akara Pesach Avi Kaiman. You tell him a mitzvah has to have tam. You have to tell a child, Baba Kama, it's not just a question of Shartam and Sharmuid and Tamun Ba'esh and Shane in Rushasa Nizik and Shane in Rushasa Rabim. 
This is Das Elyon. This is the Rabboni Shalom's Torah. This is the Rabboni Shalom showing us how you live a Torah life. Learn Nezikin and see how the Torah lays out how a society is supposed to work. How caring every person is supposed to be about their fellow man. How careful you have to be not to be mazik somebody else. And the obligations that you have if you are mazik somebody else. Because that makes a working society. Look at the society that we live in now. With all of their thousands of laws and everything else. Does it work? Does it work? Is there happiness? No, there's no happiness. Because it doesn't work. But the Torah HaKadoshah works. Because it's Das Elyon. Show a child that if you live a Torah life, you have a happy life. I always say over from Rav Moshe, Zechitzat HaVikadosh Levracha, Re'eya Noichi Noise Lefnecha Mayoyim Bracha Uklala. The Rav Moshe says, look, I'm giving you a Torah, I'm giving you Bracha, I'm giving you Klala. Es Bracha, what's the Bracha? Asher Tishmu. That you will listen. El Mitzvah Hashem Alekecha. What do you mean Asher? It should say Im. As a bracha, when will you get bracha? Im tishmu, if you listen. It's not what it says. It says asher tishmu, that you will listen. You know why, says Rav Moshe? Because listening to the mitzvahs of the Torah is the biggest bracha in of itself. Because it makes for a happy life. It makes for a life that works. It makes for nachas. It makes for simcha. It makes that when you get old, you have something beautiful to look at. You have a beautiful family to look at. It makes happiness. It works. Well, we have to tell our children when we send them off to learn, when we teach them that they should live al pitara, we have to show them the glick. We have to present it to them. Kishulchan aruch umuchan lecha lufneha adam. Show them how tempting it is. Show them how beautiful it is. Explain to them that this works. Point out to them. Look at the world that we live in. Look at all of the problems that there are in the world. And show them if you would live up Pitari, you wouldn't have any of this. You have a Chavetz Chaim Shmir Salashin. Look at the way the world works in the outside world. Everybody tearing each other to pieces with exposés and trying to, you know, show what this one did and show what that one did and bashmutz yenim and bashmutz yenim. In a, in a terrorist society, you're not allowed to do that. It doesn't work. Imagine what a presidential campaign would look like if it was if you had to keep shmira salashin. You have to show this to the children. That's the chinuch. That's what you see about chinuch. In this Rashi, we have to give them tam. We have to give the children the tame adover. We have to lay it out to them like a set table. We have to, you know, a restaurant spends time and money and effort, not only on how the food tastes, but on the presentation. Look what they do with those desserts, with the raspberry sauce and the cream brulee, and how they lay it out on the plate. People get paid good money for that. Presentation matters. We have to worry about the presentation. We have to spend time on the presentation. That's one thing. Then for us ourselves, Baruch Hashem, we live in a day and age where we have access to so much where the Torah is a Shulchan Aruch, Umuchan Lecha Lefneha Adam. We have English Sidurim of every type, interlinear, transliterated, side by side, we have every flavor in every nusach. What excuse is there not to know what every word of tefillah means? And you don't have to sit down and learn it all in one day. Make a seder a few minutes a day to go through davening. And when you get to the end, go back to the beginning and go through it again. You come to the Rabbanu Shalom to be mispal, to ask the Rabbanu Shalom for, you, for your needs. How is it that somebody should even have one word in Shemayin Esrei that they don't know what it means? Well, come up to Shemayim, they're going to say, well, Art Scroll didn't have enough different Art Scroll Sidurim that you couldn't know what every word of davening meant. We have English Gemaras and we have English Mishnayas. Uh, Mishnah Yoimi ju- just started recently. <laughs> Art Scroll has not one but two. There's the Mishnah Elucidated, which is on an easier level. There's the Yad Avram, which is on a more complicated level. There's Kahati, if you want to do it, Lashon HaKadosh. There's also the Hebrew Arts. There's so many flavors. There's no excuses. 
It's mamach shulchan aruch muchan lecha lefnei ha'adam. We live in a day and age where the Torah Doisha is being laid out to us, and we have to make sure to take advantage of it. I like to emphasize, especially in the area of tefillah. Uh, you know, tefillah, okay, I don't want to go overboard. Uh, we'll talk about it another time. But tefillah, the cornerstone of our relationship with Bari Olam, with the Rabbi Shalom, we should spend time working on our tefillah, making sure that we understand what the words of our tefillah mean. I hope you enjoy these little vertlach on the parsha. Everyone should have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos. Be well.